Hi everybody, I promise I did try to get my hair to be in a semi-normal place, but it did not want to cooperate. So, we're going to talk about the next section of our series on Catholicism and therapy by just kind of taking this next leap in our understanding and organization of existing counseling theories. Just to recap very quickly, in our previous videos, we've looked at how we can use a model of the authentic understanding of the human person to organize the available psychotherapy theories into one coherent framework into which we can plug them based on faculties, such as awareness. We can plug the mindfulness-based therapies and redeem them uh, and modify them into the faculties of um, the cognitive capacities in the intellect. We can plug the cognitive therapies and uh, we can also take some of the elements from the mindfulness therapies and the cognitive therapies and use them with the imagination. So we can kind of build this uh, this thing where the, the awareness, the imagination, the, the, intellect, the intellectual faculty can be used to take the various uh, types of psychotherapeutic interventions and they can be plugged into them. So we can use the scaffolding of the human faculties to build the building of our clinical repertoire. And we can organize and redeem and all these things according to Catholic um, understandings. And we can change these established theories into ways that make them more effective and more holistic in a true sense of that word. So as we continue, we could also then with the will, we could use the behavioral therapies. With the heart, we could use the 12-step therapies, and so on and so forth. And so this is kind of where we left off. Also understand that there would be, in rel relative to the spirit, there could be some redeemable Protestant-style therapies, things created in terms of biblical counseling that could also be integrated into this one coherent whole. So we see that the use of the human faculties allows for the organization of the available therapies that are often used. Now, the thing is we want to just kind of scroll up on the diagram and realize that now we have the different passions and instincts and impulses that can exist within a person. So for example, like a person might be angry or a person might be motivated by greed or a person might be motivated by significance or a person might be motivated by love. So all these things that might drive a person to do something rather than faculties which allow us to discipline our drives. And that's the whole thing about the human project is that it's about using our faculties to control and fulfill our um, impulses, essentially. So we use the faculties to modify the passions with the help of God is the actual um, project, as far as I can understand it and define it. It's brain control with God's help is the Catholic project, is the human project, is the therapeutic project. And so, because the other methods of brain control use the faculties without God to control the passions and then don't actually integrate and moderate the passions, they end up either uh, indulging or destroying the passions. So it's like there's the, we need to have this third factor, which is God, the superconscious, to help the conscious integrate the unconscious. Or does that make sense? So that's kind of, you need to have the third factor of God to help the, the conscious self integrate the passions well. Um, so that's kind of the project. But the thing is, obviously, the passions are another area of, 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 of human uh, territory that we haven't discussed. And there are theories which lend themselves not to practical intervention, but to exploration of human motivation. And this is the case because in early psychotherapy, there is this uh, tendency toward the analytic. And we see this happening with the teachings of Freud. And so Freud engages in what is called psychoanalysis, where he has people sit on a couch and he kind of explores their dreams and their, their, hidden, their hidden motives and these things through this lens of thinking about myth and, and hidden things. So, for example, that is a classic example of what we might call an analytic psychotherapy as opposed to a pragmatic or practical psychotherapy. Up until this point in this video series, we have discussed things that are very practical. We've discussed things that are very 
useful in the sense of the modern clinical landscape. In the modern clinical landscape, you don't usually find practitioners using primarily analytic methods like those of Freud, which are primarily about uncovering hidden motives and so on and so forth. But we do have to have some type of a theory of human motivation. And so it's very helpful to use this Catholic model of, a per of the person that we've been using as this scaffolding to organize and create the field into one coherent ideology. We can now use this and apply this in some ways to some methods of understanding human motivation. And there is going to be a somewhat of a parallel. So, for example, just like we had this very basic, basic faculty like of awareness, we could say there could be this basic passion of seeking pleasure. So, for example, Freud viewed everything through this psychosexual lens. And so we could then place Freud right there at kind of like just week we have awareness at the top as a faculty. We can put um, Freudian theory and this like psychosexual um, motivation as this first tier of understanding human motivation. Then we have people like, and I believe this is Erickson, um, who talked about like, things like birth order and things like seeking dominance and mastery and these type of things. And so this type of a motive is like one step up from that. And that kind of becomes somewhat analogous to the idea of the intellect. You know, somewhat, somewhat as a faculty, this is somewhat analogous as a passion. You know, um, it actually reminds me also of the will. You know, it's like, it's like this thing of like, who am I? And I want to be significant and dominant. It's like it's the intellect and the will almost. It's a very similar flavor to that, but as a uh, a motivation. And then we also then we find again this this motive that's very much like the heart, which we sense in so that's in logotherapy, like from um, Victor Frankl and the existential theorists. So there could be these different motives. Like we could have this drive toward so-called pleasure, the drive toward power, and the drive toward purpose. So, and it's interesting how these are all beginning with P and they are all passions, so to speak. So there is this drive toward pleasure, power, and purpose or meaning. Um, Victor Frankl called the will to meaning. Not only the will to pleasure, not only the will to power, but the will to meaning, the will to purpose. These are all different drives, all different things that may guide us. The purpose, I believe we could say it corresponds a bit to that understanding that you would have like of, of like of the um the heart. So the heart, or maybe like the twelve step movement, you might have something like that there. You know, there's like this resonance with the heart, um, with at that level. So just like we would have awareness, imagination, intellect, will, heart, as faculties, you could have pleasure principle, power principle, purpose principle on the bottom. So you, and you know, and obviously we're we'll maybe leaving out. It's not it's not one to one because you know imagination might, you know, doesn't have doesn't have to be a one to one thing between faculties and passions. But we could see that there's a similarity between these levels and a coherent anthropology that is bringing together the various ways that we could think about human motives and creating a much more holistic picture of the human person through a correct Catholic understanding of the human being. We're getting a full picture of what the whole discipline is. We're learning, we're, we're having, we're being able to unlock, use, and integrate all the insights of the whole field and redeem them. So we then could have something like, I mean, and it's possible that we could then stick something like, like Carl Jung's um, understanding of like seeking individuation and like um, personhood. So we could have, we could have the pleasure principle, the power principle, the purpose principle, the personhood principle. We have all these type of things, you know, this this integration, you know, of, of the whole person, you know, in, in Carl Jung's uh, system as, as a motivation. So these could be the central motives. And we could also have these other theories, you know, as the, um, the, 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 the methods of dealing with these motives. So we can see how we're putting together one picture. We could have the so and so let, let we state it all as one as one that you know, a person can use awareness type skills, imagination type skills, intellect, uh, cognitive skills, will type skills, heart type skills, and spiritual skills. And they do this to manage, to manage and fulfill, to moderate and integrate their, um, their desire, for, their, their impulse to pleasure, power, 
purpose and personhood. These, this is how we can think about this. You know, we can have this, this is one coherent system, which is the integration of the entire psychological field through the Catholic model of the person. And so this is something that is of deep value to a clinician, to a therapist, because this allows us to truly create a psychology, to truly integrate all the insights that the entire field has to offer and to elevate and redeem them into the best possible versions of themselves. This is of great worth um, to be able to do this because this is what we have to bring to bear on, on, hum on humans. Now, each one of these theories that we've mentioned has its benefits and drawbacks and has things that need to be redeemed in it. So I'm not saying you just so play, plug, plug Jung in here, plug Freud in there, plug plug Erickson here, and plug uh, Frankel over there in the middle. I'm not saying you just bup, 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 just put them in wholesale. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to, now that we've kind of talked about this whole picture, we're going to make another video. And we're going to think about how, how we can like analyze these approaches, what's good, what's bad, and what's usable and what's not usable. So thank you for listening to this part of the video. And we're going to then put this together in another um you know, we're going to we're going to kind of explore these things more deeply in the next video.